you know, it, it was, it was affecting my life on a daily basis in a negative way. And if something's doing that, uh, you know, it's best to, to get it sorted if you can get it sorted. And thankfully we can, as men with cases of gynecomastia, we can get the surgery to remove it and remove it. They did. What's up guys? Quick video. I've just got back from a run. It's been about half an hour and I'm still sweating. But we're not here to talk about that. What we are here to talk about is gyno. Gynecomastia, bitch tits, whatever it is you refer it to or whatever it is other people refer to your case as. Um, I, I, I heard it all in my case. I did. <clears throat> I heard it all. And that goes back to, you know, the fact that I did indeed suffer from gyno. There have been a few people over the years that have seen my case, seen the way that I talked about it prior to getting surgery and after, and said, you know what? What on earth were you worrying about, Jack? You didn't even have gyno. People have said that wholeheartedly and wholeheartedly believed that. And I think the reason why they say that is because they never, <laughs> they never saw it in its worst form because I never really wanted to present it in its worst form. Um, you know, possibly straight out of the shower, nice and hot. You know, in some, in some cases, being more overweight can make a case look worse. In my case, when I got leaner, it made it look worse. And so I got myself into a fairly lean state prior to going in to get surgery. And, um, you know, even, even me, even I was at times doubting myself whether I should get the surgery done, whether it was bad enough to, to um, warrant the surgery. And at the end of the day, I just had to keep reminding myself that, um, you know, it, it was it was affecting my life on a daily basis in a negative way. And if something's doing that, uh, you know, it's best to to get it sorted if you can get it sorted. And thankfully, we can. As men with cases of gynecomastia, we can get the surgery to remove it. And remove it, they did. So for anyone out there who's wondering what gyno actually looks like, what it is. It's a mammary gland. It is what makes up the female's breast, except, well, in some cases, yeah, there are guys who've been really, really unlucky and have huge cases of it, and they do look like women's breasts. In my case, it was about the size of a golf ball. About the size of a golf ball. And that was enough. That was enough to affect my life in such a negative way from the age of 12 all the way up until the age of 27 when I finally got the surgery. Today's video is to show you exactly what it looked like. So I woke up, well, woke up from my days, um, about an hour and a half the surgery took. It seemed like about 10 minutes for me because they did give me a Xanax pill, which I am appreciative of. Have I had one since? No, uh, but they do work. And so I woke up, I sat up, and uh, they, uh, they, they, you know, tape down my chest, um, and they'd also put the glands that were cut out from my body, from my chest, in a beaker of fluid. In a beaker, they put my breasts in a beaker. So I was actually shown that container prior to leaving the surgeon's office. I was shown the beaker, and um, I was so you know, I guess, geez, what do you want to call it? Grateful to have them out of my body, shocked at what they actually looked like, um, that I pulled my phone out in, you know, the, the, the zannied up state I was in. And, um, and I took a photo. I took three photos. In fact, I, I picked up the beaker, took one, turned it around a bit, took another and turned it around the other way and took another. So what I've actually done is, is have a look through a, uh, old, hard drive of mine and I've actually found these photos that I thought were gone forever. So I've got the three photos, I'm going to show you them right now and this is exactly what my case of gyno looks like and I assume what everyone else's case is going to look like just in a different size. So first and foremost let's bring up, let's bring up this one. So there we have it. You know, it's, it's actually, actually come to think of it. I haven't looked at this photo for a while. The beak is not that big, but the size of gyno is about a golf ball. If you, if you look at my thumb, my thumb is probably about half the size of the gland, at least this part of my thumb. So if you talk double that, what's that? That's about a golf ball. 
about a golf ball. So that's picture one. Now let's rotate the container a wee bit. Whoa! Jeepers creepers, look at that thing. That was in my chest, my friends. Two of them. And, uh, yeah, what else can I say? Did I have dino? I indeed did. Now let's rotate it again. And there you have it. So clearly this is where, you know, they've, they've either cut or burnt out uh, the, the gland. And the gland is, is surrounded by fat. Now, I'm not going to say that my surgeon was the best, but it was effective. He'd done over 1,500 gynecomastia surgeries. I had some pretty serious complications um, following my surgery, which I've made a vlog series about. I never would have thought it would go... Uh, I never would have thought the, the recovery would last that long. I never would have thought it would have gone that bad. But I also never would have thought that those videos would have gone so well. And they've, they've brought, you know, a fair few new viewers to the channel. So at the end of the day, it is what it is. And it was worth it in more ways than one. But I mean, if we, yeah, basically, I mean, that's it. And the photos were taken, as I can see by the title of the picture here, 29th of November, 2017. And today's date is the 25th of November, 2021. So in four days time, it will mark four years since my surgery. And I feel like that might call for a video. An update video, four years after the surgery. In fact, yeah, I might just do that. So anyways, guys, um, it is extremely hot. I'm still sweating. Went for a 10K run this morning, felt fantastic. Um, and I'll tell you what, feels bloody fantastic to be able to take my top off and, and, and not worry about this anymore. Uh, but also wear clothes other than the color black and, and also not, not worry about it anymore. And I'll finish with this. You know, there's a question that I get asked many, many times. Do you regret it? And with the recovery going the way it did, in the worst times, I had to sort of, I had to ask myself that. I'm like, did you do the right thing, Jacob? Was it worth it? Was it as bad enough of a case to warrant the surgery? And at the end of the day, living my life now, free from that, free from that anxiety, free from that restriction, you know, <sighs> the recovery could have been 10 times worse. At the end of the day, it was worth it because of those reasons. There's no... I don't think about it. I do not think about it anymore. You know, do I still have a bit of body dysmorphia? Yes, because I've been into bodybuilding and I struggled with this for so long. Um, you know, the, my chest, my nipples were the focus of my attention for so many years, but even with a fair amount of body dysmorphia, I, I, I still don't worry about it anywhere near like I did. Uh, when I was suffering from this. And this is a small case, I must admit. Like I said at the start, this is a, a pretty mild case, but, you know, was it worth it? Absolutely. And that's what it looked like. Okay? So thanks for listening, guys. And peace out.